I'm Erin, and I'm obsessed with books. It's plainly obvious to see, so if you missed that, I'm not sure how, you might need glasses. We're having a bit of a questions and answers video today. You guys have asked so many questions on my previous two writing vlog videos about how to write a book and so on and so forth. First off, thank you for all the love on my book writing vlogs. There will be another one coming up in a couple days, so if you want to see that, maybe hit the notification bell or the subscribe button if you're not already subscribed, and you'll get notified as soon as I post that video. Let's jump straight in. I've picked 10 questions in particular that you guys have been asking a lot. First question, what do I use this journal for? You may have noticed in my previous writing vlogs that I've always got this with me and I'm always scribbling notes, because that's exactly what it is. It's a notebook. If you are planning on writing a book or currently writing a book, I would 100% suggest you get yourself a really nice notebook. It's great to keep track of different little things that you know are going to be important for the story later on and you need to reference back to them or little threads that you're running through it. It's really a good way to keep track of those things. I find often if I'm stuck and I'm staring at my screen on my computer and I'm wondering what the hell am I going to do with this, it helps to just pick up a pen and write on something that looks different to get ideas flowing. I know that probably sounds weird but it really does work. Keep track of what you're doing because honestly writing a book can get extremely complicated especially if you're doing a fantasyful book like my books they're all fantasyful if you have complex magic systems or really really complex characters it's very very helpful to just have some notes to refer back to I never go anywhere without a notebook I never go to bed without my notebook next to my bed last night I woke up at about 1 30 with like oh, I've had an idea I've had an idea where's my notebook and for the first time in forever it wasn't there. I'd left it in my bag. So I had to like go and find something to write a note on and scrap paper doesn't work because if I keep things on scrap paper I lose them. Question number two, what software do I use while writing? That's a really good question. There are a lot of softwares that you could potentially use. I personally use uh, Microsoft Word. It's just because it's easily accessible to me. I don't have any preference to it or to anything else. If you don't like Microsoft Word, I would suggest Scriver. Uh, if I'm pronouncing that right, I'll link it below. It's a very popular uh, writing platform for a lot of authors, or a lot of them also use Google Docs because then it's easy to share with your editor. You're not at that stage yet until you have an agent and an editor, and we're going to get to the point of how you do that in a little while, so just keep watching. Question three, do you have to be a certain age to write a book? If so, what's the age? There is no age limit. You can write a book no matter what age you are. The youngest New York Times best-selling author in history was 12 years old. It doesn't matter how how young you are, if you have a story, write it down. Whatever age you are, if your story is solid, you're good to go. You just gotta get through that rough patch of the first draft. It doesn't matter who you are, if you're Stephen King, your first draft, gonna have some issues. That's normal. Just write it down. The first draft is the hardest part about writing a book. Getting those words on paper, getting the structure of a story down, that is really hard. But then afterwards, that's when the fun comes in because you get to go through it and flesh it out and make it so full and bright and well-rounded and beautiful. You just gotta give yourself a bit of time. Question number four, I think we're on question number four. Um, how do you come up with a title for your book? Uh, with great difficulty. It, it depends on the story, honestly. The one that I'm writing at the moment, I think I have a title for it. It's gone through about four or five titles now that I've thrown out because I've hated all of them and this one has stuck around the longest. So I'm not sure if it's going to be the title, but we'll see. The title for this one, we went through about five, six, seven different titles. Titling books is not easy. So if you're having trouble titling your book, join the club. We eventually settled on the fire thief because it made a lot of sense for the character. She's a bit of a vagabond, a bit of a thief, a very good one, and there's a lot of fire involved in the book. Shameless self promo. For Queen of Extinction, I still hate this cover. I still hate it. For finding the title for Queen of Extinction, it was more along the lines of let's gather a bunch of key words together that we like, that make sense for the story, and then mix them all up and see what comes out. And we came up with Queen of Extinction. I'm writing my own book. Do you have any suggestions for me? I do, and congratulations. That is really exciting. I do have a lot of suggestions for you. Hard to put into one video. Even when you want to lay on the floor and cry with a tub of ice cream because the story is not going the way that you want it to, you gotta get up and you gotta keep writing that book. There will be days when it feels 
quite impossible, but it's only impossible if you choose to stop writing. That's the only thing that makes it insurmountable, is your choice to stop. If you keep going and you press forward with it, you will eventually finish that book. It will eventually be exactly what you want it to be. Other suggestions would include have an awesome playlist music, top-notch help with a book. Which brings me to our next question, how do you come up with ideas? Ideas could come in anything. It could come through a piece of music, a beautiful place, a person, a name, like the fire thief. The entire story came because I thought of a character's name. You can find inspiration in absolutely anything. Also, I spend a lot of time browsing Pinterest looking for things that snag my attention. I'm like, ooh, I want that in my book. How can I incorporate this? What is the publishing process? Um, that's an excellent question. There are three different ways that you could go about publishing a book. The first is self-publishing, the second is indie publishing, and the third is traditional publishing. It really depends on what you're wanting to achieve. Self-publishing is pretty self-explanatory. You publish it yourself on Amazon or another platform like Kobo. You come up with the cover yourself, you come up with the blurb yourself. If that's the route that you want to go down, I would 100% highly recommend hiring an editor it, uh, and beta readers. Get people to read your book before you publish it. You need people to tell you what's working and what's not. You need people who have a different set of eyes to pick up on any plot holes or spelling and grammar errors because you'll be surprised how many of them sneak through the cracks. With indie publishing, it's basically through a small publishing firm. You do get a lot more say than say traditional in things like the cover and the blurb and stuff like that. And you're expected to do a lot of work post book. You do a lot for um, promoting your book and advertising and stuff like that. You're, you're heavily involved. And then there is the traditionally published route. That's the route that I prefer. But whatever route works for you is the route you should go with. Traditional publishing takes a very long time. You first go through writing the actual book and you have to do your first draft, then your second, then your third, and you refine the living crap out of that thing. Also, great idea to get somebody else to read it for you and look for plot holes, look for problems. You've gotta go at it with a very, very technical and critical eye and you cannot be precious about things because when you eventually hand it to an agent and to an editor, things are gonna get changed. But we'll get to that in a moment. You refine and you edit the crap out of your book and then when it's ready, you can begin the submission process, which is when you search for agents who would be great for your book. Don't send it to just every agent on the planet. Don't send the same query letter to every single one of them they, they communicate, they will know. They want to see that you have researched them, they want to see that you genuinely believe that this book could be good for them, not that you're just throwing it at any agent who will take it, and they need to see that the story is good. There are a lot of things an agent will look for, and it all comes down to that query letter. Once your queries have gone out, the hope is that an agent or several agents will email you and ask you for your full manuscript or for a partial and they'll read it and they'll either say yes we love it we want it or sorry it's not right for me but good luck with everyone else i hope it goes well for you one very 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 important thing that i must stress never ever 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 give an agent money to represent your book it is a scam an agent will never take money from you until they have sold that book for you to a publishing company. They take a percentage, usually around 15%, but that varies according to agent. If you have someone saying, we will represent your book, but give us $3,000, it is a scam. They are trying to steal your money. Which brings us to what your agent, a good agent who you didn't have to pay upfront, will do. They will then take that manuscript and present it to different publishing houses that they believe would be good for your book. For example, Bloomsbury, or Wednesday Books, or Simon & Schuster, or Penguin. There are a lot of different publishing companies and houses that would be looking at your book, and hopefully one of them agrees to buy it. That means that they buy the rights to publish your book. If you want to go the traditional publishing route, a few things you need to bear in mind are it is very slow, and as soon as you sign that contract, you do lose a lot of control. You don't get to pick the cover, you don't get to pick the blurb. They will definitely ask for your input, but you don't have the final say. So while there are three different methods of going about publishing, do some research yourself, don't just take my word for everything, and find the one that you feel happiest with. We will do a video about querying, and you want to stick out of the sludge pile because they get upwards of 
400 queries a week and you're in there somewhere, you need to stand out. So we will do a video about that at another time. Which brings us to our next question, how do you make a cover? Again, depends entirely on the route of publishing that you've chosen. If you're an indie author, you get to design the cover yourself. I would recommend getting a professional designer to do it, don't just make it yourself. Rely on a professional to do that. Your job is to write the book, not to design the cover. You're not a designer, you're a writer. Oh, it's not 10 questions, I wrote the same one twice. <laughs> it's nine questions. How do you write a book outline? This is a tricky one because there are many, many methods to doing this and all of them are correct. The first thing you need to do when making an outline for your book, which is the first plotting of the book where you actually figure out how things are going to go, is to write down all the key events that need to happen within that book. Consider the fact that that book needs to be in three parts. Your act one, which is your introduction. Your act two, which is the long haul, the fleshing out, all the good stuff in the middle and the build up to act three, which is your climax and your ending. Which is why the first thing I do is to pick my key events. What needs to happen in the story that's exceptionally important to character development, progression of the plot, and overall arc of the story. You plot those particular parts out to a T, know exactly what's gonna happen. Get your notebook or, or something on your computer and write it all down because you're gonna need to refer back to it later. You have something kind of like this. You're gonna start with your act one, obviously, and what is happening to your character and in your world. Start it off with your inciting incident. What's gonna happen to kick off the story? Then secondly, how is your character reacting to that? What is their mental, their emotional, and their physical state? Secondly, you wanna write down your objective of act one. Include an important piece of character background. It builds empathy for your character when your readers. Remember, you need to have the stakes high and a source of tension so that your reader will keep reading even though they have no idea what this world is or anything about your character bar the few things that you've given to them. Map out the important conflicts, the problems, any element that may be important to the growth of your character and the building of your world, write it down. Also map out if you have a bad guy or a source of concern, like your, your, your dangerous thing that's gonna happen or your exciting thing that's gonna happen, whatever it is, you need to start building it up from the very, very start of your book. Five crucial plot points and scenes that need to happen within Act 1. It doesn't have to be five, but you do need to have some. You need to have the story moving from page one. Have something that's curious that people are like, oh, what is this about? Or something that's happened recently and we're like, oh my gosh, how is this going to affect our character? Or be in the midst of something awful happening or exciting happening. Bring your reader in. How you choose to write an outline, because there are no wrong ways to do it, depends entirely on what kind of writer you are. There are two kinds. A plotter who likes to have everything mapped out to an absolute T and never deviates from the outline. And number two, a pantser who likes to figure it out as they go along. I think I'm a pretty good combination of the two. I only map out to a T the most important parts of my story. The rest, I like to have the characters tell me the direction they want to go in, and sometimes they decide that this thing that I've mapped out to a T isn't working for them, and then we have to mix it up a bit. But you do need to know how it starts and how it ends. Where do we start it to hook your reader's attention? Where do we end it to satisfy them but keep them thinking about the book. It's really hard to tell somebody how to write an outline when there's so many good ways to do it. If you have any more writing questions, please drop them in the comments below. Also, if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified when I post a new video. I said that in one breath. <laughs> I'm Erin, thank you for watching. I will see you in my next writing vlog, which will be out in like a couple days, I think. If all goes well, it's been a difficult write, this one. Anyway, I'll see you then. Bye!